All right, in this video, we are gonna go through the derivation of the equations for op amp differentiators and integrators. So let's do the differentiator first. We are going to have an op amp. If you haven't watched the previous videos introducing op amps, you'll wanna go back in the playlist and do that with the non-inverting input tied to ground. And on the inverting input, we are going to have a capacitor this time. So in our previous videos doing inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, we only had resistors attached to the op amp. Now we have a capacitor that we are going to label CS for source. And we have our source voltage coming into the capacitor. We are also going to have a feedback resistor RF connected from the output back to the inverting input. We're going to have V out over here. And as usual, we can have a load resistor RL attached to the output, but the nice thing we'll see with um, op amps is that the equation for V out does not depend on RL. Just like we did with analyzing the inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, we're gonna mark passive sign convention on our resistor and capacitor. And remember, I have the choice of doing this. I should get the final answer, same final answer either way. What matters is that I am consistent. I'm going to mark voltages that I know. So I know that this point on the non-inverting input is zero volts since that is tied directly to ground, which means my inverting input is also gonna be at zero volts because my ideal op amp assumptions tell me those two voltages are the same. I'm also going to apply KCL at this node. So I know the current coming in through the capacitor must be equal to the current through the resistor because the current into this input is zero. Again, that is one of my ideal op amp assumptions. So I can write right off the bat that the current through the capacitor equals the current through the resistor. I know that for my resistor, I have Ohm's law. So V equals IR. And for my capacitor, I have the capacitor equation I equals C dV dt. So I'm going to, as I have done previously, solve both of these equations for I and set them equal to each other. So for the resistor, based on the sign convention I defined, I have I equals the voltage drop over this resistor from positive to negative, which is going to be zero volts, zero volts minus V out, all over the feedback resistor value RF. And then for the capacitor, I'm going to have I equals CS dV dt. V, the voltage drop over this capacitor, is Vs minus zero. So that's just D. Vs dt, I can now set these two currents equal to each other. So I have negative V out over RF equals Cs dVs dt. And if I multiply by both sides by RF and by negative one, I will then get V out equals negative RF Cs dVs dt. So there we go, that is why this is called a differentiator because the output voltage is proportional to the derivative of the input voltage scaled by this factor that depends on the values of the feedback resistor and the source capacitor. We also have this factor of negative one in there. So if you were to hook up a function generator as the input here and look at the output on an oscilloscope, which is a common introductory electronics lab. So say here I have input and here I have my output where y-axis is voltage and then I have two different time scales here. Just for example, if my input was a triangle wave, so just alternating between two constant slopes, then my output is going to be constant, but it's going to be the negative of the slope of that triangle wave. So here where I have a positive slope for the triangle wave, the output of the differentiator is gonna be negative. Triangle wave switches to a negative slope. Output of the differentiator is gonna be positive and so on. And the actual value here or y-axis scale is going to be the derivative in volts per second times the RFCS value. So remember that we talked about this in the intro op amp video <clears throat> in an ideal op amp, then the output voltage can swing between positive and negative infinity. In a practical op amp, that output is gonna saturate at the positive and negative supply voltages. So for example, depending on the expected derivatives of the signal you're dealing with and the range of your supply voltages, if you pick RF and CS values that are too big, you may make this output derivative saturate 
So you can choose those to be small enough to make sure that it's not going to saturate based on the derivatives you're going to expect. And if you remember your, I'm just going to call her high school calculus class, and for example, mixing trig functions in there, you could add, oh, whatever, I'm just going to draw it in blue. Say I have a sine wave and the derivative of sine is cosine, but then there's a negative here, so you could draw what you would expect to see for an input sine wave. And again, hook up a function generator and oscilloscope to see what you would get there. Or any other function, sawtooth wave, square wave, whatever you could get out of a function generator, you can feed in here as VS and then look at the derivative on V out. So that is it for the differentiator. Let's go ahead and do this for the integrator. So for the integrator, we are just going to switch the locations of the resistor and capacitors. So we're gonna have our op amp. We still have the non-inverting input tied to ground, but we now have a source resistor RS and a feedback capacitor CF. Again, with V out, we can have a load resistor there, but it doesn't really matter because RL does not come into the output equation. And we want to ask, okay, what is V out as a function of V in? Just like we did for the differentiator, I'm going to mark out the passive sign convention on my passive components, mark the voltages I know, so that's zero volts, therefore this must be zero volts, and mark the currents applying KCL at this node, it gives me that the I through the source resistor must be equal to the current through the feedback capacitor because this current is zero. So same thing I did before, I'm gonna go through this a little faster this time, I have IS equals IF for my resistor, that's gonna be VS over RS. And then for the capacitor I have I equals C dV dt, so that's gonna be CF D, but in this case I have zero minus V out, so that's D DT negative V out. I want to get V out as a function of VS, so now I'm gonna wind up taking the integral of this whole thing to get rid of the DDT in front of V out. And when I do that, I get V out equals negative one over CS RF integral VS DT. And that is why this is called an integrator instead of a differentiator, where again, I have a scale factor out front that also has a minus one, but now I am integrating the value of Vs instead of taking the derivative of it. And again, just like you might remember sketching in a calculus class, you can do this with a function generator and an oscilloscope, where for example, if you just have a constant input, you are going to be integrating that constant value, which is going to give you a negative straight line here, because again, we have that factor of one out there. But again, remember that a real op amp is going to saturate at the supply voltages. So if you just have a constant forever, eventually that's gonna saturate at the negative supply. Whereas if the input was a square wave or something, then you're going to get a triangle wave output and then same for again, <clears throat> triangle wave or square wave or sine wave inputs and so on. You could take the integral and look at that sketch what that was going to be or look at it on an oscilloscope but remember that again it's going to clip at the positive and negative supply voltages depending on the values of cs and rf that you select so that is it for integrators and differentiators so this is a way you can take the integral of or the derivative of a voltage without doing any computation it's entirely analog in our next couple of videos we are going to look at even more applications of op amps because these are useful little devices that you can do a ton of stuff with